Right, good evening everybody, my name is Paul, I'm also called Nick Mac, I'm the brains behind Nick Mac's Daily Teaser, and behind Nick Mac's Old Peculiar, the world's most repetitive blog. I talk about movies I've seen, and I really should sit down with something when I get the time, and I talk about TV shows I'm watching, or at least some of them. Some I've not seen, but may write about once I've finished watching them. Some I'm reviewing on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. I'm also a Doctor Who fan, and of course, given yesterday, the 23rd, was the 60th anniversary of the show, I decided some, to watch something uh, to mark the occasion. BBC 4's The Daleks in colour. I wanted to tell you about it, and I wanted to maybe try and avoid thinking about the brain of Morbius. I'll let you know more in the actual video. The Daleks in Colour opens with a colourised version of the original opening credits, accompanied by an augmented version of the theme tune, with added swooshes by composer Mark Ayres. It then shifts to show us the original crew of the ship, the Doctor, Ian, Barbara and Susan, William Hartnell, William Russell, Jacqueline Hale and Carol Ann Ford, getting out of the ship to explore the strange new surroundings they find themselves in. And, as colour bleeds into the picture, the crew find they're in a forest that is far from ordinary. The trees are not swaying in the breeze, as they seem to have been long since petrified. The flowers are beautifully preserved and beautifully coloured, but just as dead as the trees. The soil in the forest is as dry as a bone. It's only after they spot a seemingly abandoned city that the Doctor admits he seriously wants to go exploring over the objections of both Ian and Barbara. It's only after the team return to the ship that they notice a few things. All of them are feeling decidedly ill, someone has knocked at the door to leave them something, and the ship can't take off without the mercury the Doctor has run out of. Heading for the city to ask about mercury seems to be the only option. Now, what did I make of the Daleks in colour? What did I think of it? How well put together was it? What was the colour job like? What on earth did I mean when I mentioned the brain of Morbius? Let's get that last bit out of the way first, shall we? I grew up in the 70s and 80s. I think I've got vague memories of having a nightmare inspired by Inferno, the John Pertwee story. But I grew up, at least initially in the 70s, when if you wanted to watch a show, you had to be watching the TV at the time the show was broadcast, or wait for a very rare repeat, or just totally miss the episode. During the 1980s, for most of the early 80s, the same was true. Miss it, or wait for a repeat. Until video cassette recorders, VCR to our American cousins, or just plain video machines to us in the UK, became available at prices families could afford. It was like buying a, a new colour telly or buying a laptop today. It was, a, it was something everybody had. It was a new piece of radical kit. And as I recall from back then, we had a lot of arguments about who was taping what, when, I seem to recall. And I also recall that somebody in the family, not me for once, managed to get a copy of E.T. the Extraterrestrial that had fallen off the back of a shelf before the film had aired on TV. God knows where that came from. <laughs> Videos changed things. They meant you could watch what you want, when you wanted to, at a price convenient to you, and that you could buy or rent films from a video rental shop that you wanted to see again. It changed things. You didn't have to wait for ITV or BBC to show the latest and greatest movie. You could go out and buy a copy or rent a copy, or get it from a dodgy guy in a pub car park. At any rate, it was about this time that the BBC decided they'd like a slice of extra money as well, and they wanted to make money from the back catalogue and release some old cult TV shows, just to try and supplement the licence fee revenue, if you understand me. The first Doctor Who story they picked 
was the four episode 1976 series, The Brain of Morbius, something that over the course of its original broadcast, came in at a total of 100 minutes. Four episodes at roughly five, 25 minutes a time. Four times 25, 100. The BBC's shiny new VHS version came in at 60 minutes, with about 40 minutes missing. at an episode and a bit missing. According to the TARDIS fandom site, it was supposed to be a family-friendly version of the story aimed at the US market. I personally think it was to try and keep costs down. 60 minutes of tape would be a lot cheaper than 100 minutes of tape. But for whatever reason, the brain of Morbius was badly butchered and its edited release caused something of an uproar amongst the fans I knew. It was not popular but it thankfully wasn't something that was repeated as far as I know. The BBC made damn sure later videos, you got the compete kit and caboodle. Like I say, something that was never repeated to the best of my knowledge until the BBC announced a 75-minute colourised version of the Daleks, which would air on the night of the 60th anniversary itself. I was curious. I wanted to see it, but I was very aware that the brain Morbius had suffered from its editing. I wasn't am aware of many things. I was aware that the full version of the Dalek runs to some 175 minutes or so, just shy of three hours in length. It's seven episodes, 25 minutes or so a time. 175 minutes, roughly three hours. I was aware, and I'm aware, that younger audiences may not want to sit through that unless it's a big event movie. They may want to see a version of the story that, like the Peter Cushing film version, wasn't that much longer than 90 minutes. Doctor Who and the Daleks, that very movie, comes in at a technical of 80 minutes. I'm also very aware that the colorization process takes time. I don't know that much about these things, but I'm very aware that this sort of thing, like old-fashioned cell animations, the colouring can take time even with the AI and computer technology that's available. Colouring each frame would take a while. Rendering and exporting the video file could take even more time. The shorter a given video that needs exporting, or the lower the resolution of said video, the less time the rendering of that video would take. Making videos for YouTube and using Handbrake to recode stuff teaches you a thing or two. At any rate, I was not surprised to see that this new, shiny, colourised version of the story had been editing into a shorter form. Was I right to be concerned about the length? No, absolutely not. Whoever edited the episodes together to make this 75-minute feature-length version has done a very good job. It's fast, it's zippy, it's well-paced, and it kept me glued to my seat, more so than the full-fat version possibly could if I was watching it in one go. Granted, some scenes are repeated, but that seems to be more flashbacks or reminders of what's happened earlier rather than boring filler. Mark Ayres' additional music the theme tune, or his take on the original Delia Derbyshire theme tune, seems genuinely very good, as does the rest of his composition for work for this particular piece. Granted, there are times it seems intrusive. It did when Barbara first encounters a Dalek, and when the rest of the crew do likewise a few minutes later. There are also times when the Daleks are deciding to release more radiation into Scarrow's atmosphere, that springs to mind here as a good example. There are times when the music is perfect. And generally speaking, the score is very well done and added to the pace of things. It added drama and tension and pace. The colorization process itself sometimes um, is not perfect. 
there's one scene in the Geiger counter room where they realise what's going on. The Doctor, Ian and Susan, realise what's going on. Where parts of the cast's faces still seem to be in black and white, but others at the other end of the screen seem to have some sort of lilac tinge. There's also later scenes where the bumps on the Daleks' casing seems to be an even lighter shade of blue, uh, where in earlier scenes they were shades of light and dark, light and dark blue that showed us shadow and lightness. Quite what happened there, I don't know. I really couldn't tell you, but it's something I noticed. But for the most part, that is countered by the simple fact the colorization job is, if not perfect, then certainly very bloody good. It is, especially in well-lit scenes, it is perfectly done. And the colour design, the bits of walls being this colour, the Dalek bumps being that colour, Barbara's pink blouse is very definitely pink. The skin tone is pretty damn good as well. For the most part, that colour design and colourisation is very good and borders on absolutely jaw-droppingly monumental. Frankly, between Terry Nation's original writing, the original cast and crew's work, and the modern editing, scoring, direction, and colorization, we have a formidable and formidably watchable piece of work. Just as a final point, I'm very aware that there's a Blu-ray version of the Daleks in Colour available to pre-order on both the UK and the US branch of Amazon. Complete with this colorized version of the story, an upscaled version, upscaled versions of the original episodes and various other extra features. I don't know if the Blu-ray will be available on other online sites or outside the UK and US. I'm also very aware there's animated reconstructions of classic stories that are largely missing were halted after the release of The Abominable Snowman as funding from BBC America was pulled. But that those reconstructions have recently restarted with the release of The Underwater Menace, something I'm planning to see myself as soon as I get the chance. I don't know who's helping with the funding of those reconstructions, but I'm glad they did. The Underwater Menace, like I say, is something I'm planning to watch when I get the chance, so keep your eyes on this channel and blog. There is also the BBC's Doctor Who The Collection range, their Blu-ray box sets of complete series of classic Doctor Who. Those get fairly regular releases, but most of the ones that have been released come from the later years, John Pertwee's early seasons and later. The earliest it's been released so far has been William Hartnell's second season, the second year of the show, season two it's marketed as. And I'm assuming that that got a release rather than others because it's the one with the least missing ev episodes. That leaves me thinking a couple of things. It leaves me thinking that I doubt we'll see box sets of season one and three, four, five and six for a while until the BBC can find more of the missing episodes. They don't seem to mix the ready-made animated ones in these collections. I also think that individual complete stories from those seasons, An Unearthly Child for example, The Ark as another, can be made into colourised feature versions and sold in Blu-ray form in exactly the same way as the Daleks in colour has been. You do uh, a colourised feature version, you add the original but upscaled original episodes. And I think there could be a market for that. We could get to see more of these colourised versions. This is quite a good thing that's been done. This one going on, this one example that should prove popular. And we see this colourised feature and the original episodes in Blu-ray. Given how well the Daleks in colour has been done, I think that sort of release will be a money spiller. And I think this, this show is worth your time. 
Right, with all of that lot said, done, dusted, thrown down the corner and then gently swept under the carpet, I am going to leave things here with a possible last few words as well. Firstly, yes, the Daleks in colour is worth your time. Go watch it, leave me a comment or two either on the blog or here on YouTube. I am also going to tell you or highlight some dates. I am writing this and recording this post on Friday the 24th of November. I will be watching the first of the anniversary specials, The Star of Beast, tomorrow, the 25th. And I will have my written and video reviews of it up on the 26th of November. There's more. I'll be watching The Bear Hug, the next episode of For All Mankind, on Monday the 27th of November, and I will be posting my written and video reviews of that on the 28th. Hopefully, I will see you one of those days. I will love you, leave you, wander off into the sunset, and leave you with the very ironic phrase of Sir Patrick McGowan. Be seeing you.